Hey guys, welcome to another video. On today's video, I'm going to be going over each of the various most popular districts to live in here in Ho Chi Minh City. Let's jump right in. District 1 District 1 is known as the financial hub and epicenter of Ho Chi Minh City. You won't find anywhere more central than District 1, which gives you easy access to most of the other districts here in Saigon. This is the place where all the tourists love to congregate. District 1 wouldn't be District 1 without these following places. The Buntun Market Buntun Market is a large market where you can find all sorts of goodies including cloves, food, souvenirs, and trinkets all at overinflated prices. You might as well just hand them over all of your money and be done with it. Next we go to Wingway Street, a famous walking street that's devoid of people during the daytime yet packed in evenings as locals, especially youngsters come here to chill snap selfies and eat unhygienic street food that's ready to give you the runs for the week. If you love hanging around other backpackers and drunk foreigners, then why not head down to Buiving Street, the red light district here in Saigon. Here you'll find backpackers, drunks, hookers, pickpockets, drug dealers, and did I mention criminals? If you're looking to suffer from hearing loss, Or you enjoy mingling with rowdy drunks and massage girls asking you to get a happy ending massage every two minutes, then you'll love it down here. Now if you're looking for something a little bit more on the quieter side, then be sure to check out these other attractions like Turtle Lake, the Notre Dame Cathedral, and the Saigon Post Office. Lastly, there's a shit ton of hotels here in District 1. You'll find everything from a hole in a shack rat infested hut to your luxurious 5 star hotel equipped with infinity pools and rooftop sky bars. If you're looking to get ripped off or get your valuables stolen, then come and live in District 1. In District 1, expect to pay at least double to triple the prices on everything compared to all the other districts here in Ho Chi Minh City. But hey, what did you expect? Being centrally located is expensive. Who should stay here? Those looking to be centrally located and have easy access to all the other districts. If you want to be in an English friendly part of the city. If you want to do a lot of touristy stuff. Or if you're loaded and rich and want to be around tourists and backpackers. If you enjoy visiting bars and clubs. And if you like to drink and party. Moving on. District 2. District 2 is known as the Expat District. The district is located a good 20 to 30 minute drive away from District 1. Over here, expect to find an expat enclave that is home to hundreds and quite possibly thousands of expats. Some of them are rich and loaded, while others are your typical backpacking ESL English teacher. Most of the people that choose to live here do so because they want a more western lifestyle with western amenities. There is a ton of overpriced western style restaurants here along with several international schools that charge an arm and a leg to teach your kids. There's one large shopping mall called the Vincom Mega Center touting in case you get bored as well. Now rent is pretty cheap here compared to some of the other districts and offers a more modern style accommodations. You can expect to pay around 500 or 600 US dollars to get a modern one bedroom apartment here. Despite this district supposedly being one of the newest and most modern, the roads unfortunately are all f***ed up and full of potholes. In fact, I would even classify it as a driving hazard. It seems, despite the rich residents residing here, they have failed to convince city officials to fix up the roads. And even worse, when it rains, the roads usually get flooded and you can see people getting swept away, never to be heard from again. Okay, maybe not, but do make sure you know how to swim if you do choose to stay here. Additionally, traffic is also a big problem here. Expect daily traffic jams occurring, especially during rush hour, where all the rich folks like to show off their Honda Civics and Corollas. In fact, you can bet your ass at one point or another, some rich prick driving a Honda Civic will try to run you over because he's in a rush. Look at this dick, he doesn't even yield to pedestrians. What a f***, this took his license plate, he's gonna kill the f***, throw eggs at his car. F prick. You want to get run over by a rich prick driving a Honda Civic? Come here. Come live here. 
to help combat the traffic congestion issue. City officials have started to build a metro line, which was supposed to be completed this year. However, things have been pushed off to 2020, and quite possibly later. Who should stay here? If you want to live in a western bubble and feel like you're not in Vietnam, then come and live here. Or if you want to be surrounded by expats, if you want to live in a more quieter part of the city, if you're looking for more modern western amenities, or if you enjoy watching people screaming and crying out for help during floods. District 3. Do you enjoy food and shopping? Well then, you'll love District 3. District 3 is located a short 10 minute drive away from District 1. District 3 is what Vietnam is like without all the foreigners and tourists. So if you're getting annoyed with tourists and seeing other foreigners around, then get your ass over to District 3. Here you can enjoy living with locals and watching their daily lives unfold before your very eyes. There's a ton of street food stalls and restaurants lining the streets. And get this, you're going to be paying local prices for food, not touristy prices. Just to give you guys an example, a plate of broken rice with pork chops, fried egg, and all the fixings can be had for around 35 to 40,000 dongs, whereas you would be paying double this down in District 1. Rent in District 3 is also a little bit cheaper when compared to District 1, while still allowing you to be centrally located. There's also a market here called Wing Van Joy, where you'll find a combination of produce, poultry, seafood, clothing, and household goods, and even food. And if that wasn't enough to keep you entertained here, why not go visit one of the many coffee shops lining the streets here? But of course, nothing's perfect, and in this case, that's traffic. Traffic jams are quite bad during rush hour here. Also, there's no shopping mall, which is a big bummer as well. So who should stay here? You should stay here if you want to have a local feel, if you want to be centrally located, if you love food and shopping, and if you want to save a little money. District 4. Next up we got District 4. This district is also located a short 10 minute drive away from District 1 and connects with District 8 and 7. District 4 used to be a very, very scary place full of rascals and gangsters, and even locals tried to avoid this area. However, in recent years, the government has been taking out the trash and, and now there are tons of new developments spring up all over the district. But because of its former bad rap, expect cheaper rent prices despite its central location. Like District 3, there's a lot of street food stalls and eateries here, and even a local market. In addition to its former gangster rep and the street food here, District 4 is also famous for the Rainbow Bridge. If you've ever looked up any photos of Ho Chi Minh City at one point or another, then you've probably seen photos of this bridge. The bridge is for pedestrians only, and lots of locals love to come here to snap photos. The district, however, still has a few pockets of crime plaguing it, so be careful when coming here. So who should stay here? You should come to District 4 if you love street food, if you travel between District 1 and District 7 often, if you want a more rough feel of the city, or if you want to save some money. District 7 Like District 2, District 7 is also a relatively new area that has gotten very popular with both locals and foreigners in recent times. District 7 is located about a 25 to 30 minute drive from District 1 depending on the traffic. The roads here in District 7 are much more newer and wider compared to the other districts. And there's a lot of new developments going up and the neighborhoods are also much quieter, especially in the Fumi Hung area. But for some reason, a lot of Koreans have decided to colonize the area and call it their home. So you can expect to find a ton of Korean restaurants, supermarkets, and even massage parlors catering to Koreans here. So if you love Korean culture or you're just into K-pop, then you should fit right in here. In addition to the Koreatown in this area, District 7 is home to two large shopping malls, the Crescent Mall and the SC Vivo City. Both malls are large and spacious and have all the standard amenities you would expect a mall of this caliber to have, such as shops, food courts, and even a movie theater. 
Unfortunately, due to the large influx of Koreans and foreigners in this area, expect prices to be much higher on average compared to some of the other districts. In addition, rent prices are also a hit and miss. If you choose to stay in the more affluent area, such as the Fumihong area, then expect to pay upwards of a grand for an apartment, whereas if you stay in the less popular areas, rent can be quite reasonable. So who should stay here? You should come here if you're looking for a quiet place, if you prefer a more modern area, if you're Korean or you just love Korean culture, or you're rich and you like to flex your muscles. Next up, we have District 5, 6, and 11, also known as Chinatown. District 5, 6, and 11 is one of the oldest districts here in Ho Chi Minh City. It's home to the largest Chinese population here in Saigon. These districts are well known for their tasty and delicious food, along with a ton of temples and pagodas that receive millions of visitors each year. So if you're a huge footy, then you won't find a better place than right over here. In addition, there's a large market here called Bin Tai Market, where all the people from Bunta Market usually come to buy all their stuff at a huge discount to oversell and rip off naive and unsuspecting foreigners and tourists down in District 1. These districts, however, are quite far from District 1 and all the other districts, so getting around won't be quite as convenient. However, prices for food and accommodations are a lot cheaper compared to some of the other districts, and these districts do possess their own unique charm. So who should stay here? You should stay here if you're Chinese or you love Chinese culture, if you love food, if you're religious and a Buddhist, or if you want to save some money. Next up, we have District 10. District 10 is located between District 3, 11, and 5, and isn't too far from District 1. If I can describe what District 10 is like, it's like District 3 times 2. So if you enjoy District 3, but want an even more local feel to it, with cheaper prices, then District 10 is the place to be. There are a ton of street foods and restaurants all scattered all throughout the district. The area is busy and noisy. There are of course traffic jams during rush hour despite the much wider roads, but it retains a local feel due to very little foreigner presence here. And of course there is a newly built large shopping mall in the area if you enjoy shopping as well. And if you're religious, there's the famous Wuktu Pagoda in the vicinity as well. And since District 10 is a little further away, expect rent prices to be even cheaper. So who should stay here? You should come and live in District 10 if you want to have a local feel, or if you want to save some money, and if you're a foodie. Next we have the Bintan District. Bintan District is located north of District 1 and is a short 10-15 to 15 minute drive away. There's an expat enclave in Bintan around the Vinhomes area where you got a shit ton of apartments all congregated together overlooking the Saigon River. This district is home to the tallest building in all of Vietnam, the Landmark 81 building. This building has a shopping mall, observation tower, restaurant, bar, hotel, and apartments. If you're planning to dine out here though, don't expect prices to be cheap, as a simple bowl of pho costs a whopping 920,000 dongs, about 40 US dollars. And if you're looking at checking out the observation deck, Know that it won't come cheap neither. You're looking at spending around 810,000 dongs, roughly 35 US dollars. Just opposite the Landmark 81 is the Vinhom Central Park, a newly built clean and luscious park inspired by European architecture overlooking the Saigon River. At this park, expect the smell of fresh cut green grass, beautiful trees, playgrounds, tennis courts, and basketball courts, and even a Japanese garden and pond. Now if you're adventurous and don't want to live in a bubble, you can venture outside of the enclave and experience the real Bintan district. With its rough around the edges atmosphere where motorbikes are zipping right by you, left and right, and food vendors are busy yelling out food on the streets. And if you journey north in the Bintan district, you arrive at the Binwei tourist village. This tourist village gives you a glimpse into the daily life over in southwestern Vietnam, such as in the cities of Gintao, 
Benjie, or Meital without having to travel that far. If you're thinking about staying here, expect food and rent prices to be much more cheaper here compared to District 1. Now noise levels here are quite loud outside of the Exped Enclave area, and traffic jams are quite common as well. And if you thought some of the other districts were wild, wait until you come here. So who should stay here? You should come and stay in the Bintun district if you want to live in a bubble surrounded by apartments. If you're looking to save some money. If you're looking for more modern accommodations, but only around the Vin Homes area. Or if you want to be centrally located. And finally, we have the Fu Yun district. This district is located right beside District 3. It's known for its many restaurants and eateries, especially around Fansik Long Street. Unfortunately, besides food, the area doesn't have much else to offer, and you'll quickly get bored if you're staying here. Also, traffic jams are a big problem here. But despite this, food and rent prices are more reasonable here. So who should stay here? Come and stay here if you're a big foodie or if you're looking to save some money. Well guys, this wraps up this video. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I have a link to an article that I wrote with a lot more information regarding the various districts here in Ho Chi Minh City down in the description below, so be sure to check that out as well. See you guys again next time on VidQ Dating.